Hey everyone, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be discussing phonics and science from the code versus round six study. So what are the problem sheets? The problem sheets will be given n n and you start from one and you got to reach n in minimum number of days. Now a day composes of two halves. One is the daytime, the other is the nighttime. So what can happen is, let's say you're given one bacteria. So since the day composes of a day and a night, in the daytime, you break it down to 0.5 and 0.5 and in the night, it automatically increases it by one. But then there's a restriction that in the daytime, you can break it or you cannot break it. That means, let's say for the first day, you got this. So for the next day, you have 0.5 and 0.5. You might think that, oh, so for the first day, you got this. For the second day, you have something as 1.5 and 1.5. So it might happen in during the day, you will not break it or you break it and then let's say i decided not to break it so in the night it will just increase by 2.5 so in the night it just increases by one and becomes 2.5 each and for the next day you have 2.5 and 2.5 then you might decide that okay i will just break one of them so what happens is 1.5 stays 1.5 since i broke 1.5 this becomes 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 now since in the night you know this is bound to get added by one. You add it by one and this becomes 1.75 and this also becomes 1.75. So eventually you have three guys and then if you want, you can break all of them. So you will have 4.75 and then in the night one gets added. So you have four 1.75s. This is what you can do in a given day that if you have N bacterias and out of them in the daytime, you can break any number of bacterias. And in the night, all the bacteria present will get increased by one and it will move to the next. Day. So let's say N is nine and you have one. So according to the uh, problem, it says on the first day you break one, the second day you do not break any and the third day you break two. So let's break it on the first day to one. So you get 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So in the night it gets added to 1.5 and 1.5. Day two will have 1.5. 1.5 now since in the day two it didn't break anything so this 1.5 gets converted into 2.5 2.5 in the night and this goes to the next day so in the next day if you see he says all of the two bacteria are converted so in day three we are going with 2.5 and 2.5 but it says that break all of them so what you'll get is 1.25 1.25 and 1.25 so i've broken all of them down so in the night time it will increase by one in the daytime all of them broke into two bacteria so 2.5 was broken into two right and this 2.5 was broken into two so in the night time everyone increases by one so we can say it will have 2.25 2.25 2.25 and 2.5 we have completed three days now if we add all of these bacteria now, if we add all of these bacteria, we can easily get nine. So we see that using three days where we break one bacteria in the first day, zero bacteria in the second day and two bacteria in the third day. So in doing so, we're able to reach nine. So the problem states, you got to minimize these number of days. And when I say days, that means it includes days and nights. In the problem it's written night so it's fine like in an entire day you're going to minimize this entire number of days whenever you see such kind of problems the first thing that should strike your mind is maths it, it is solvable by maths now whenever maths comes whenever you see such division by two multiplication by two increase by one so it gives you a hint that the answer should be somewhere uh, around the powers of two so let's see how that look like so let's first greedily Try to break all of them. So, so one first broke to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then it increased to 1.5 and 1.5, which eventually gave me three. Now this three composes of 1.5 and 1.5. Now let's again break them because what I'm doing is I'm greedily trying to break all of them. So if we break it, what we get is 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0 0.75. 2 decomposes into 4. Now, in night time, they will increase them by 1. So, it becomes 1.75, 1.75 
and 1.75, 1.6. So these on addition gives you 7. Now this 7 composes of 4 times of 1.75. So we can see that there's a jump of 2, there's a jump of 4, then there's a jump, then if you compute next, there will be a jump of 8, which will eventually take it to 15. Now, so we have figured out that greedily on a given day, if I try to break all of them, that means all the vectors present, I'll break them into two parts. And then in the night, they will auto increase by one. So eventually in doing that, I figured out on a given day, the increase is two to the power X. So I figured this out. So once I figured this out, we will greedily try to reach our answer. So let's take an example and understand. So let's first take the example n equal to 13. And then we can take another example and understand how does greedy approach work. So what I did was I, on the first day, made it three because we know if I break it entirely, I'll reach three. On the next day, I made it seven. That's very obvious. So greedily, I reach three, seven by breaking the bacterias completely. And then should I go to 15? No, because we just need to reach till 13. So how will we reach after this? That is our main question, right? So to reach 13, we got to figure out how many bacterias are there at every day. So over here, there was one bacteria. Over here, there was two bacteria. Over here, there was four bacteria. Now, if I break down all of these four bacterias, that is that means eight. So I can reach 15. That is the maximum that I can reach by breaking all of them down. Now, what if I do not break all of them down? So can I say, if I do not break all of them down, I can reach 11. So what I can do is, I will not break any of the four bacteria and say them, hey, stop and wait till night and increase by four yourself. So what they will do is, on the night, they can increase by four themselves. And in doing so, they can reach 11. So I can easily say that from seven, I can reach any portion from 11 to 15. So we have figured this out that the minimum number that we can reach is 11 and the maximum number that we can reach is 15. So I figured out that we can reach 11 if we do not break anyone and we can reach 15 if we break everyone. But can we reach all the numbers in between them? That is 12, 13, 14. Yes, we can reach. If you write, write them mathematically and try breaking them like first break one, then try to break two, then try to break three, you will eventually see that you will reach 12 on one break, 13 on two break, and 14 on three breaks. And then I'm not writing it because that will take a lot of time. You can try that on your own. So we can reach all the numbers from 11 to 15. So I proved this. So we want to reach 13. So how do you reach 13? So what do you do is you are at seven. So what do you do is you write 13. And whatever is the difference, simply write it. So you have numbers, right? That is one, two, four, six. So you know from one bacteria, you changed to two bacteria. So what is the number of bacteria that you broke in this game? That is one. From two to four, what is the number of bacteria that you broke? That is again two. So what is the number of bacteria that you broke over here? That is two. So we can say in the first day, if you break one, in the second day, if you break Two, the third day if we break two, we will, we will eventually reach 13. That is very obvious because if zero bacteria break allows you to reach till 11. One break reaches, one break allows you to reach till 12. Then two breaks will obviously allow you to reach. So I figured this out. But then you might ask, uh, hey Striver, what if N is 9, 10? So what is the thing that we do during that time? So let's see. So let's figure that out by trying one more example. So let's take n is equal to 10. So let's do the same stuff again. That is we move from one, then to three, then to seven. And then we know we cannot move to 10 because after seven, if you break all of them, we will move to 15. So from here, what is the range that you can move to? We've just now figured out that is from 11 to 15. But 10 lies out of this because if you add seven, so what does this mean? Initially we had one bacteria, then we had two bacteria, then we had four bacteria, And after that, uh, if even if you do not break any of them, you will reach a minimum of 11. But then how do you reach 10? So what you do is whatever is the difference, 
just write it down. So the difference over here is three. So write it over here and simply sort it. One, two, three, four. So once you sorted it, now figure out what is the number of changes. So over here, the number of changes is one. That's very understandable because if you have one bacteria on the first day, and then if you break it to two, the number of bacteria that broke is one. So from two, if you want to break it to three, so what will be the number of breaks? One. And over here, the number of breaks will be one again. So if you perform a break of one on the first day, break of one on the second day, and a break of one on the last day, you can easily reach 10. So you might ask why? So let's understand why. We can easily see that Yes, we have started from the first bacteria, then we broke it to two, then we broke it to four. So is there a way? There's no way in which you can reduce a bacteria because we do not have provision for that. So that is the reason we sort it. Once we have sorted it, we know what is the bacterial number of changes that is required. That is the difference, right? If you are increasing from one to two, one is the difference. From two to three, one is the difference. From three to four, one is the difference. Hence the answer becomes one, one, one. So you might argue, uh, how have you proved that can we reach the answer or not? Again, if you write the minimum and maximum, you will easily figure that out that you start from one bacteria, then you move to two bacteria, then you move to three bacteria, then you move to four bacteria. And while you do that, what is the number of, and while you do that, what is the number of increase? That's nothing. You increase the total to three over here. Now over here, the bacteria would be something like 1.5, 1.5. So since you're only breaking one because you're increasing bacteria from two to three. So what you're doing is you're doing it 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and this stays 1.5. And at the night, it becomes 2.5. This becomes 1.75. This again becomes 1.75. And ultimately, if you add them, what do you get as? So you can see, you can reach six, which is very obvious because from two, the minimum that you can reach is if you do not break any one of them, you'll reach four or the maximum you can reach seven. So we try to reach till six and that's very obvious. And from six, they're again breaking one bacteria. And if you see, if you break one bacteria, you will eventually reach 10. You can do the calculations on your own. You will reach 10. So that is the reason we sort it because we know from two, we can move to three. From three, we can move to four. And what we initially did was we computed powers of two, which eventually led us to 10. So this is the way we figured out our answer. So how can you code this? That's very easy. What you do is you start taking the powers of two initially. That is one, two, four, and go until eight. And unless their sum does not crosses the given end. Now, why do that? Because that is the number of bacteria that will greedily multiply itself. So why you do for one, two, four? Because those are the number of bacteria. If you greedily break it at every stage. So you do not add anything once you exceed n. So over here, let's say n was 10. So you will add one plus two plus four. And what do you get is seven. So you stop at seven. So you got one, two, four. And whatever is the difference, that is 10 minus seven, you append that. Append it. So you got one, two, three, four, three. Next step, sorted. So you get one, two, three, and four. What is the next step? Take the difference because that is the number of bacterial decays that you will be doing. So whatever is the difference of the adjacent elements, that is your number of bacterial decays that you'll be doing on a given day. And the answer will be very obvious. If this is four, the answer will be three. So let's quickly have it right on through the code. Now this code has been taken from the editorial because I was not able to code my solution within the time limit today. So you'll take the N as the input at the first step. So next step, you construct the sequence that is one, two, four. And then if there is some N left, that means over there we are taking 10, right? So there was three left. If there is, you can push it back, append it. And once you've done that, sort it. Now, what will be your number of days? That's very obvious. Whatever is your total size of the sequence, minus one will be your number of days. And what is the number of bacterial increases? That is the difference of adjacent elements. That is the thing that you do. So guys, this is all about today's round. I hope you have liked all my videos. So just in case you have liked the video, do press on the like button. Do not forget to subscribe. And yes, do press the bell icon to get notified whenever I post.